On today's resource review, we're looking at primary resources to teach the tricky topic of fractions. And I hope that the three resources that each comprise one third of the show will add up to one useful programme. The resources are a set of card games to play indoors or outdoors, a box of magnetic shapes, and a school website featuring links to fractions activities. Recommending today's resources, we have Chris Pearson, who is a former maths consultant and now head teacher at Goldstone Primary School in Hove, East Sussex. On the panel today is Keith Fox, head teacher at St John's Walworth Primary School in the London Borough of Southwark. And we have former teacher Dave Smith, who's now an ICT consultant and curriculum advisor to the Havering Inspection and Advisory Service. And to play on our fractions theme, the other half of the presenting team, resource investigator Matthew Tosh, is out and about seeing what pupils and teachers make of our resources. Chris, let's kick off with your first choice of resource for us today, and it's on the table here. It's called Runaround Fractions. Tell us about this and why you like it. I really like this resource because it's, it does something that um, teachers sometimes do themselves. They're nicely produced um, cards. They, they allow teachers to do uh, various things with them. They're not just one activity. They, it comes with um, six activities suggested, but there's lots of other things teachers can do with them. So Chris, what's actually on the cards? Each card has basically three sections. It has the, the number, uh, the fraction written as a number. It has um, a representation of, of the fraction um, as, a, as, a, as a coloured in part of a whole thing. And then it also has the fraction um, as an everyday thing, in this case, a sandwich in the card I've got in my okay. hand. Oh yes, and I can see carrots and apples down That's there. Right. It, it encourages teachers to get the children out of their seats and. Uh, and enjoying doing maths activities with fractions, which is something uh, certainly a lot of parents might think is, uh, is impossible. Thanks, Chris. Well, Matthew Tosh, our resource investigator, ran over to Stuart Fleming Primary School in South East London to see the cards in action. Well, it's a lovely day here and an excellent opportunity to see Zoe Green and her Year 6 class with the runaround fractions. They're over there. If I wanted to work out two eighths of a number, what would I need to do? So if I wanted to work out two eighths of something like 147, what would I have to do? I don't want the answer, I want to know how I would work it out. Alice? Zoe, can you tell me how you've been using the cards today? Um, well, what we've been working on in class is looking at revising our knowledge of fractions. So today we took the cards outside and played three different games where we were revising how to make a whole using fractions, ordering fractions by size um, and also thinking about equivalent fractions. What is it about these cards that you really like? I think um, they gave lots of good ideas as a sort of spark um, for teaching about fractions because the ideas behind them um, just gave me a slightly different way of thinking and approaching teaching things like equivalence and size and the children really enjoyed the element of being outside and active. You've got one whole, two halves, eight eighths, four sixths, two quarters, one third, two eighths, one sixth. Brilliant, well done. For some of my class, the activities were a little bit too simple. It was fine for us to use for revision, but we'd rather have sort of more advanced fractions in there to sort of stretch my, my upper ability children. Some of my children out there had no concept at all, really, above halves um, with what fractions were before we started using the cards. So, would you use them again? Definitely. I think the children really, really enjoyed them. And the starter games that came in the pack, um, I've now think I can adjust and tweak and make my own versions of the games up so that we can play something different using the same resource. Thank you very much. And now I'll hand you back to Hermione. Keith, what do you make of runaround fractions? I think it's a jolly good idea having fractions activities which involve the children in those sorts of physical activities. One of the problems certainly we found in our school when it came to fractions is that you start off doing a very concrete work with the children where they're actually dividing 
things they can feel and they can touch, but you've got to move from that con concrete to the abstract. And uh, with these cards and with those sort of activities, um, you've got both sides. You've got the concrete going on, the abstract, so the children can make that comparison. Great. Dave, what do you make of them? Well, certainly from the classroom-based activities of breaking up bits of chocolate and pizzas and going outside and bringing healthy schools into this by actually making the children run around is great. <laughs> um, I think I pick up the point you're saying about the, uh, you know, the more difficult fractions. But then again, this is, you know, it's pitching it to the right level of the children. You different use this as a differentiated activity, it'd be fine. The only thing I would say, and I, I think it's a nice quality um, resource in terms of the look and feel of it, and uh, say is that this used over and over outside, maybe a little flimsy in terms of the card. So maybe a, a bit thicker on the card, yeah. and that may help. But other yeah. than that, no, I, I, I very much like it. Chris? For the, the, the cost of them, uh, I, I think that uh, I think they're good value. I think yeah. Keith's point about that moving from, from concrete to abstracts is really, really important. Yeah. And I think that, uh, that this is a, a fun, or the, this, this provides fun ways of doing that. OK, well now let's move on to your second choice of resource, Chris. Yeah, it's a, a set of magnetic shapes here called 3D Fraction Shapes. Tell us about this resource. OK, I really, really like this resource. I'd never seen a resource quite like this before because it, it allows children to really understand parts of three-dimensional shapes and understand the idea of fractions. This allows children to really explore shapes and really um, see how shapes fit together. And with the different range of shapes that we've got there, you can see you can you can do work with equivalence. You can do work that shows how you can't add certain fractions to make a whole. Um, and also the fact that there's a sphere and a cube shows that actually two halves only make a whole if they're from the same, if they're halves of the same, same unit. OK, well, let's see if Matthew found the same response. He visited Glebe First and Middle School in Harrow in Middlesex to see the 3D shapes in action. Who can tell me what this is? What fraction is it? Amara? A hole, good girl. One Savinda, hole. how have you been using the magnetic shapes today? Okay, we've been using them with year five, and basically they were going to add up two fractions together and work out the answer, and then they were given the 3D fraction shapes to actually explore the answer and use them to show what they've worked out. So what's the actual benefit of having it there in front of you? When the children were asked to actually work it out on their whiteboards, they had to look at two sums and work it out as an answer. When they were given the resource as a 3D resource, they could actually try out the pieces, assemble them together. So it's a very good visual resource. Half of a quarter. Come on, guys, Kishan, you know. One-eighth. Okay, so how many eighths do we have here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now, you've mentioned the visual aspect. Do you think the blocks are suited to a particular learning style? Um, they are suitable for a range of students, but I think they're more geared to older students in the primary school. Now, is there anything you perhaps don't like about them? The other fractions were fine. I think the third did confuse the children and they didn't find any use for it and they were exploring that fraction. Perhaps it could be complemented with the sixth, maybe, which would match up and give them more options to try things out. What do you like about them? It's just that like they're magnetic. So they stick together? Yeah. So you've used the resource today, what are your overall impressions? It's been an excellent 3D resource to use with fractions. Thank you very much Satvinder. Now let's see what our panel thinks. It's back to the studio. Well Chris, the teacher there suggested that she'd quite like a set of shapes for a sixth. I mean, what do you think of this range that we've got here? I think the teacher makes a really good point, and, and, and the point that there's, it's difficult to match, to match the, the, the ones that she's got with, uh, with a third, they're not part of that fraction family, is a good point. And I think it would be a, a nice thing to have a sixth and maybe a twelfth set as well, if, if that were possible. OK, well, panel, Dave, what do you make of this resource? Yeah, I pick up that issue as well about the equivalence of fractions as well, and I think that's important. I think it's a very robust resource as well, so it looks like it's going to last for a long time. Um, maybe it would be useful on the fraction, parts of the fractions themselves, the shapes actually write on what the fractions are so the children can see that. Hands on in the classroom you'd need groups of these around the room. Price is okay for that because they're going to last for a long time I would think. So I think it would be a very useful um, resource to use for teaching fractions actually. They look quite 
sort of tactile to me. I'm surprised you guys haven't jumped in and are playing with them. They live, that's what I wanted to. <laughs> Keith, what do you make well, of I them? Well, I was going to jump in because I think one <laughs> of the things um, is with children, and this, I think this would be good with very young children as well, is when you're dealing with fractions, you look at that and what have I got? I've got one. And is that a whole? And because of the colour and because of it being so tactile, you can put them together and say, well, no, that is part of a whole one. It isn't one on its own. Mm. Now, I'm getting confused. You can see how children would get confused. Mm. So this is another box of tricks that you can use to actually help children to understand that a fraction is part of a whole um, and you've got the colour coding here to help you. And, and if, I, if I can say that, I think that... that, that what this sort of resource does is it allow it develops con a concept, a concept of what fractions actually are, and, yeah, and yeah. too often we do jump from that from that that concrete into the abstract too quickly before children really get that understanding of what a fraction and what fractions are all about, mm. which is this idea of parts of holes. Great. Well, thanks very much. Now let's move on to Chris's third choice of resource for us today, and it's the fractions section of the Coxhoe Primary School's website. Uh, Chris, tell us why this is a resource that you're recommending for us. Teachers can use it on an interactive whiteboard but it can also be used by children sitting at a computer on their own. So, so, th so this is one choice that you can access through this website portal, if you like, that all these choices relate to fractions. That's right, and some of them are better than others. Uh, right. I, I don't know them all, but some of them are, are, are good, some of them maybe I wouldn't personally use. This one I, I do okay. like. It shows the fraction as, a, as, a, as, a, as an image with, with a part of the square filled in, um, and then it also allows you to try and match the, the, the fractions so that you can add them together. And I can see you've got different levels of difficulty that you can set. That's right, and, and the, the more difficult problems are really quite challenging and really gets to, designed to get children to really explore this, uh, this application so they can solve the problems. Is this a free application? It's downloadable for free on a trial basis. If you want to um, get the licence for it, you have to pay for that. Uh, for the school. Okay. Well, Keith, what do you make, first of all, of Coxhoe Primary School's attempt to bring all these resources together, and then secondly, this particular one? The uh, resources being all together saves teachers a fantastic amount of time, so this is very valuable. This particular site, I think, would be very good for children to work on in pairs so that they can actually talk about what they are doing and they aren't just pressing the buttons on the off chance they might get the right answer. Dave, what are your thoughts? I think a web-based resource like this is very useful because not only can you use it to reinforce concepts within the classroom, but outside of the classroom, when the children go home or go to the library, they can uh, actually look at the activity again and have another go at it. So that gives them that opportunity to reinforce the concept and, and their learning in turn. Great. Well, thank you all very much. That's all we've got time for, I'm afraid. But just to recap, the three resources that we've looked at are... Runaround Fractions, supplied by TTS Group, Magnetic 3D Fraction Shapes from Hope Education, and the Fractions section of the Coxhoe Primary School website. For more information about the resources we featured, go to our website, it's teachers.tv forward slash resource review, or you can email us resource review at teachers.tv. I'd like to say a very big thank you to our panel, to Chris, to Keith, and to Dave, and thank you for joining us. Bye bye.